Good day to you my friends, I'm Kenator and we have a brand new trailer for Outpost Infinity Siege. So I'm going to break it down and provide a bit of context and info for the game throughout as I've already been in playtests for it. So don't go anywhere. The start of the trailer kicks off with some radio chatter and showing the player's character with some of the really nice art assets that have been made for the game. But the radio chatter talks about how the veal is gone. The world as we know it has pretty much ended and this veal is a tech to stop the big bad AI that has taken over the world from targeting the player from space. It lets you operate out in the world and is part of your base in its main tower. More on that in a bit. Jumping straight into some in-game footage now of collecting items and equipment while in first person. And this shows off a few things in quick succession here. First is item rarity. You can expect the standard white, green, blue, purple, gold rarity levels here. Something every one of you should be familiar with by now. The small pistol that you have is hugely important to your character build since it can be upgraded in many ways. Slowing this down, we can see the character equip a new barrel for the gun and a sight with a built-in shield generator. These items not only boost the stats of your weapon, but provide unique bonuses, like shooting two shots at a time or adding to your melee damage, for example. The next important part of the weapon is the proto slags. These are upgrades to the gun that change the bullet properties. And let me tell you, there are a lot of different types of these. And depending on the type and rarity of the magazine that you have, the more of these you can equip. But you are limited to one skill, one elemental type, and the rest are just buffs. And these skills come into play in the next scene, as you can have multiple proto slag loadouts per gun, each having their own skills and buffs. We see the character use a grenade shot to then switch to normal shooting before firing a jump pad to the ground to get to the top of the base. The whole premise is that you go out on missions with your base, and in the missions you bring back items to your base and send these items back in a big box. When you launch the box to return via a cable system, this starts the extraction raid and your base is attacked. The base we are seeing here is more of an early to mid game one and the base footprint can be expanded as you level up, leading to bigger and bigger bases. For more info on that, you can check out my other video on the game, link in the top right and the video description. Just be aware, some of it is outdated and is from a very early alpha playtest. Enemies drop in waves and attack throughout the countdown timer, which is when you would escape the mission via a dropship and your base continues to move to the next location autonomously. The trailer switches up gears here to show off some late game gameplay. Huge waves of enemies and huge firepower to take them down. And then the epic view of four players in front of the biggest cannon in the game. That's right, four player co-op will be available for some missions and game types. We see a lot of different weapon types in this build up with the biggest baddest cannons supported by smaller cannons, basic machine gun turrets, powerful sea whiz guns, mortars and artillery. It then shows us some of the RTS gameplay where missile silos on your base can be used and launched via the overview interface, which you can access anytime from anywhere on the map. So you can always be in control of your base from generating new ammo boxes to building more units and more on those units in a sec. The next part of the trailer is all new even to myself. I have not seen this location before and seems to be a very different type of mission. My guess would be a possible story campaign which I would personally love to see for this game but it also might be an end game high level mission, time will tell on this one. We're back to the RTS overview now deploying Tesla coils. While inactive these will add power to your base but when activated they will become a close range weapon. These can link together to increase both the range and attack power. We also get a view of the spider tanks here. These are units that are controllable on the battlefield, but you must keep them reloaded once out of ammo. They can be given simple orders to follow you, roam or defend a position and come with a choice of different weapons to be attached. Showing off one of the bosses here now, the Swarm, which looks very much like the ones in the Matrix. You must do massive damage to the Swarm to take it out, as with most of the different bosses in this game. The base we're seeing here is a completely endgame one too, with so many more guns, multiple levels and all the equipment the game has to offer, including, you guessed it, mechs. There are three levels of mechs you can get in the game, as you will see later, one can even fly. 
The character has a piece of armor, a glove with a built-in grappling hook that is not a standard ability, and uses it to get close enough to enter the mech. The mechs, like everything else, also have limited ammo, but can be reloaded by other players while you're in one. Working together in multiplayer is a must, but also is an incredibly rewarding experience as you progress and share the spoils of an infinite wave run. The longer you last, the better loot you get. The trailer caps off with once again what looks like a story sequence continuing from the first scene. This could be the main HQ where everything is being collected to fight back against the AI Signet, of which we see a tease of just creeping through the clouds in the sky. Those huge glowing boxes are in fact massive pillars that can drop on you in the game if you leave the field area during missions, and these will insta-kill you. So there you have it, this game looks even more impressive with every video the dev team over at Team Ranger put out. But before you go, and I mean it, don't click off just yet, there will be at least one more playtest of this before the launch later this year. And if you want to be in with a chance to be part of that, then you will need to be on the game's official Discord, of which I've included a link for below. Tell them Kenneth or sent you, and keep an eye on those announcement channels. As and when I get more info in for Outpost, I'll be surely doing more content on this game. But for now, you can go watch my older video from the first early alpha playtest if you haven't already. Now, don't forget to drop a like, stay subscribed for more, and I'll see you in the next one. Kenator, out.